Hey guys, thanks for being here today. Um, hope you all are having a good day. Today what we're going to do is we're going to discuss topic 1.2, the developments in, in Dar al-Islam between 1200 and 1450. Let me hide my little Dili Whopper here. Um, and we're going to specifically look at the end of the Abbasid Caliphate and how that came to an end, what brought about the end of the Golden Age of Islam, and also what replaced it, what uh, political entities emerge in its power vacuum. So first of all, a little context here. By the late uh, Abbasid period, you need to know that Dar al-Islam had spread all over Afro-Eurasia, right? So Muslim rule was no, really, no longer really a, a Arab phenomenon. Um, there were Muslim Kurds, Persians, Turks, Mongols in the Ilkhanate, as you read about. Uh, Mongols had been converting to Islam. Uh, Afghanis. So all of these different groups of people um, were converting and adopting uh, and uh, adapting to Islamic culture and Islamic rule throughout uh, the world. As far away as even Malaysia, uh, there were Islamic and Indonesia Islamic converts, right? And so a lot of the rulers saw an advantage to converting to Islam, uh, as you explored with the Delhi Sultanates um, that brought them into networks of trade and allowed for connections with different merchant communities, uh, and allowed for their power to grow and their wealth to grow as well. So it's it's important to know that even though the Abbasids are kind of on the decline by the, let's say, the 11th, 12th centuries, Islam had spread so far and so wide, and it was so egalitarian and so universal that really it didn't really matter that the Abbasids uh, were no longer going to be the big, uh, the big kid on the block, right? So uh, Islam itself is flourishing, it's thriving, but the Abbasids are kind of uh, beginning to fragment and new Islamic political entities will be emerging as we shall see today. So uh, we are going to focus first on why did it decline? Why was what happened in the mid 13th century that brought about an end to the Abbasids? Um, in the 11 and 1200s, it says they start to begin to suffer some some of the same problems that a lot of large empires suffer, which is invasion by outside rival groups, outside um, pressures and states. And uh, the Abbasids were not unique in that in that instance, right? And so, who is most famous for, of course, bringing about an end to the Abbasid rule? And that would, of course, be the Mongols uh, when the Mongols invade and conquer. Uh, Baghdad, they lay siege to Baghdad in 1258, overthrow the caliph, uh, infamously bring him out into the center square, town square, behead him, and install a new khan uh, over to, to rule over the, that very rich province, that very strategic uh, area of land. And they, uh, and that, of course, that region of Mong, that region of uh, Mongol rule, the state that they uh, name it after is called the Il Khanate, the Il Khanate. And so that really is kind of the formal ending uh, of the uh, Abbasid, um, you know, the reign in the Middle East is about the mid 13th century. So what happens as a result of that? Students what? Currently in athletic classes report to the cafe. All right. Students currently <laughs> in art classes report to the auditorium. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harris. I am recording this uh, lecture and class is coming to an end for some for some kids. Sorry about that. Okay, so mid 13th century um, is when they're you know the the Abbasids are overthrown. What what replaces them and what new political entities emerge is what we're going to look at now. All right, so it is important to kind of think back to the AP exam. They do have a um, you know the. Course description does specifically reference what new peoples and what new states emerge to replace the Abbasid Caliphate. Um, if you go back, if you recall back a few weeks ago when you were reading about topic 1.2 developments, developments in the Dar al Islam, you remember reading about these new uh, uh, political entities called, you know, the Mamluks, the Seljuks, and the Delhi Sultanates, right? And so these are the things that would show up on an exam. This is the, you know, the causes and the effects of the rise of new Islamic states. And then the development would be uh, as the, the Abbasid Caliphate fragmented because they had grown too large, you know, their caliphs had become corrupted, new armies and new provinces and regional powers took more power away from the central government. 
that's those are the reasons why it fragmented. And then what new peoples emerge says down here, new political entities emerge dominated by Turks. And that's what we're going to look at today. We've already kind of looked at India and the uh, spread of Islam to India through the Delhi Sultanates for that three centuries. Today, we're mostly going to focus on the Seljuk Turks and the Mamluks.